One excellent way to convey life of another time period is through historical fiction. There are many out there that describe the lives of slaves, but there is only one that was written right here in our county about a local girl. Elisa Carbone is a writer whose books typically reach middle school and high school readers. Some of her work is pure fiction, others are based in fact. One such book is rooted right here in Montgomery County, telling the story of Anne Maria Weems, a 13-year-old slave who takes the Underground Railroad to Canada. Anne Maria began her life here in Unity, Maryland. She was the property of Charles Price, who owned this house. Back then, Mr. Price farmed tobacco and ran a tavern. Anne Maria lived with her family in a slave cabin in the back. Their living conditions were that Anne lived with her mother and father and brothers and sister, and the downstairs would have been a dirt floor and a big open fireplace where the, the mother would cook. And then the upstairs, it's upstairs makes it sound like, oh, you get to go upstairs to the bedrooms, but really it was a ladder leading up to the attic. And the children would have been sleeping just on the wood the parents would have been sleeping just on a pile of rags on the dirt floor. This cemetery, only three miles away, may have figured prominently in Anne's young life. Today, it is identified as Howard Chapel Cemetery from 1862. But back then, as this passage from the book indicates, it may have served as a place of worship. Church wasn't a building. The law said black folks weren't allowed to have a church meeting without a white person to oversee everything. So church was a clearing in the woods near the slave cemetery where tall trees protected them from sun and gentle rain. It was aunts and uncles and friends come from the neighboring farms. If anyone were to discover them, it just looked like a picnic. Anne Maria's father, John Weems, was a free man. As such, he was afforded small freedoms unavailable to the rest of his family. He was able to reach members of the Vigilance Committee looking for help to buy freedom for his loved ones. Her owner, Charles Price, accepted money for her mother. He was willing to sell her. He accepted the sum that was offered for her sister, Catherine, but he did not accept the money that was offered for Anne Maria. He decided he needed some household help for his wife and refused to sell Anne. And so she was separated from her entire family within a matter of, of a few months. At the same time, the Price family, experiencing losses in tobacco farming, moved from Unity to Rockville, Maryland. Her owner, Charles Price, put an ad in the newspaper that said he was opening up his slave trading business below St. Mary's Catholic Church in Rockville. So we know that there was, you know, that they were close to St. Mary's Catholic Church. Her life was very different in that instead of living with her mother and father and, sis and siblings, she was on her own living in the kitchen and she was now forced to do a lot of the work that she used to just help her mother with. While in Rockville, Anne Maria could have visited sites that still exist today. One passage in Stealing Freedom talks about her cooling off in the Rock Creek at Baltimore Road. Another mentions visiting the county fair, which was held on the grounds of what is now Richard Montgomery High School. And still another involves St. Mary's Catholic Church. St. Mary's Catholic Church was one of the very first churches that allowed blacks and whites to worship together. And there was a small free black community in Rockville. And then, of course, there were slaves in Rockville. And in the church, downstairs is where the white folks worshipped. And then there was an upstairs area where it was a sort of a balcony, um, a loft, where the blacks were welcome. When Anne Maria was 13, the same man who helped to free her family contacted her. It seems her freedom could not be bought. However, the question now was, was she willing to steal her freedom? At that moment, she had to make a choice. She could either stay there where she was. She was near where her mother and father and sister lived. Hopefully, she would be able to visit them at Christmas time. Or she could venture and escape along the Underground Railroad, which was very dangerous, fraught with pitfalls. But if she did manage to make it to Canada, she could have her freedom, but would probably never see her family again. And at age 13, she had to make that decision. Anne Maria chose the latter. Accompanying a doctor from Philadelphia and dressed as a coach boy, her journey took her through Philadelphia, New 
New York City and upstate New York. After a long and arduous journey, she made it to Canada. To follow her entire amazing escape from Rockville, read Stealing Freedom by Eliza Carbone. It's available at local libraries.